This lecture begins the discussion on fallacies. There are two types of fallacy. The formal fallacy has a faulty structure, whereas the informal fallacy has faulty content. Fallacies of relevance are the first set of fallacies that are informal and can only be determined by examining the content of the argument. We will be talking about these fallacies, appeal to force, against the person, appeal to pity, appeal to people, accident, missing the point, straw man, and herring. The first fallacy to discuss is called appeal to force. The Latin term argumentum ad baculum means literally appeal to the stick. In this case we have an arguer who threatens the listener. He poses a conclusion. This is an example. Secretary to the boss. I deserve a raise in salary for the coming year. After all, you know how friendly I am with your wife, and I'm sure you wouldn't want her to find out what's been going on between you and your client. Well, you can see that this threat has nothing to do at all with the merit of the secretary and her deserving a raise. The second fallacy of relevance is called argument against the person, the Latin term argumentum ad hominem. There are three types of argument against the person. There is the abusive form, the circumstantial form, and a form called to quoke. We will look at each. Generally, in the argument against the person, there is an arguer who will attack a second arguer. Here are some examples. This is an example of an argument against the person where the arguer, the second arguer, attacks the first arguer. Before he died, poet Ellen Ginsberg argued in favor of legalizing marijuana. But Ginsberg's arguments are nothing but trash. Ginsberg was a pervert and a thoroughgoing advocate of socialism. Oh my! You can see that the argument itself about legalizing marijuana is completely ignored. What is not ignored is the character of Ginsberg. But this has nothing to do with the argument and accepting Ginsburg's conclusion. The second form is called circumstantial, and here is an example. The Dalai Lama argues that China has no business in Tibet and that the West should do something about it. But the Dalai Lama just wants the Chinese to leave so he can return as leader. Naturally, he argues this way. Therefore, we should reject his arguments. This is a fallacy. Why? Because in order to determine whether or not the Dalai Lama should return to Tibet, you have to look at the argument. You cannot attack the Dalai Lama's circumstance and use that against him for a reason to reject his leadership. This is an informal fallacy, ad hominem circumstantial. Here is another argument example. Your argument that I should stop stealing candy from the grocery store is no good. You told me yourself just a week ago that you too stole candy when you were a kid. In this case, it is a fallacy because fingers are pointed. The whole question of the ethics of stealing is ignored. Instead, there is a U2 argument that discredits the initial argument. 
The next informal fallacy of relevance is called appeal to pity, argumentum ad misericordium. Here we have an arguer who tries to evoke pity in the listener and poses a conclusion. Here's an example. Your Honor, I admit that I declared 13 children as dependents on my tax return, even though I only have two. But if you find me guilty of tax evasion, my reputation will be ruined. I'll probably lose my job. My poor wife will not be able to have the operation that she desperately needs, and my kids will starve. Surely I'm not guilty. An astute lawyer and an astute member of the jury would realize that pity has no bearing on guilt or in innocence. The next set of fallacies are called appeal to people, argumentum ad populum. And there are three types. One is called the bandwagon, one is an appeal to vanity, and the other is an appeal to snobbery. An arguer will play upon the insecurity of the listener and pose a conclusion. Here are some examples. Of course you want to buy Zing toothpaste. Why, 90% of America brushes with Zing. Here the arguer is telling you to Jump on the bandwagon. Everybody's doing it. That's why you should, too. But this is no real reason for you to accept the conclusion of this argument. Here's another example. The appeal to vanity. You need to wear Hanes. It will make you irresistible. This is an arguer appealing to the insecurity of the person listening. Everybody wants to feel beautiful, and the implication is, if you don't wear Hanes, you ain't beautiful. We know that's not true. The third argument, fallacy, is called appeal to snobbery. And here's an example. A Rolls Royce is not for everyone. If you qualify as one of the select few, this classic may be driven at British Motor Cars Limited. There are so many ways that people like to separate each other, and one of them is the sense of feeling a cut above. This is what marketers use many times to get clients to buy products, but this feeling of insecurity is no reason to accept the quality of any product. Another fallacy of relevant is called the accident. And here we have a general rule that is misapplied in a specific case. Here's an example. Freedom of speech is a constitutionally guaranteed right. Therefore, John Q. Radical should not be arrested for his speech that incited the riot last week. Well, we have a law that does not allow people to say what they want when we know that it's going to cause serious harm. This is an example of a general rule misapplied. Likewise, if somebody screams fire in a crowded theater, that also is illegal. There is no free speech that would permit this because such an action would cause terrible harm to people. Another fallacy of relevance is called missing the point. This is when some premises are stated but the conclusion that is inferred, or the conclusion that the listener arrives upon, is not contained in those premises. Here's some examples. Crimes of theft and robbery have been increasing at an alarming rate lately. The conclusion is obvious. We must 
reinstate the death penalty immediately. Well, how is that conclusion derived from those premises? That conclusion misses the point of the premises. Here's another example. Abuse of the welfare system is rampant nowadays. Our only alternative is to abolish the system altogether. Again, that conclusion misses the point of the premises. The fallacy of relevance, called straw man, is a situation where the arguer distorts his opponent's position and then poses a conclusion. Here's an example. The garment workers have signed a petition arguing for better ventilation on the work premises. Unfortunately, air conditioning's expensive. Air ducts would have to be run throughout the factory and a massive heat exchange unit installed on the roof. Also, the cost of operating such a system during the summer would be astronomical. In view of the considerations, the petition must be rejected. Well, the simple request for better ventilation has been distorted into the request for air conditioning. And it is easy to distort the request for air conditioning, but it is not easy to distort to, to, to reject the argument for better ventilation. A fallacy of relevance for the red herring is when an arguer draws the listener off track or changes the subject and poses a conclusion. Here's an example. Environmentalists are continually harping about the dangers of nuclear power. Unfortunately, electricity is dangerous no matter where it comes from. Every year, hundreds of people are electrocuted by accident. Since most of these accidents are caused by carelessness, they could be avoided if people would just exercise greater caution. Can you see the change of subject? Nuclear power to electricity. This is an informal fallacy of red herring. These are the lists of fallacies that we have discussed so far. This concludes our lecture on the first set of informal fallacies.